Ever wondered what you would get if you mix a Core XY 3D printer together with a cantilever arm 3D printer? We will get the Z Core. It's a Core XY system with a cantilever arm 3D printer. I always wanted to know if this is actually possible. Well, in this video, in part two, I'm going to actually use parts that I have here on hand in my house and build the thing as far as I can. And uh, you know, let's see how this is going to work. Hey, Zach here. You know, this Tic Tac belt printer project from several years ago it didn't work out and nobody actually posted something about this belt printer that you built from a reality and a three well as a matter of fact i do have some aluminum extrusions two long ones two middle ones and two with a 45 degree angle which is perfect i mean not that i'm going to use the 45 degree angle at this moment but i can use without drilling holes tapping holes maybe i need to re-tap them i don't know but i can make here a little base out of it so first i'm going to lay it down here I'm going to screw it in together and uh, let's see how far we can come the main focus now on this moment is on the x and on the y axis the z axis the, the z axis is not really the priority at this moment so let's uh, get into the assembly shall we this is not going to be about the beauty contest this is more like the concept thing This is going to be attached here with the carriage in between. For this moment, it are V-slot rollers. I'm going to connect the bracket together here and then having the V-slot rollers, two on the top, one on the bottom, just like on, on a normal Creality and the three. And it's going to roll over here and uh, here for the hot end carriage, it's uh, going to be exactly the same kind of idea. So the Y-axis is going to be sitting like that. And then this is going here, exactly like that. I think it's going to look great. So I've got here the drawings that I made. This is a rough sketch, how I want to visualize it. It's going to help me when I'm going to design it in, I think I'm going to use Tinkercad for this. But this is the concept. Let's uh, let's go in Tinkercad and uh, let's design the whole thing. I'm not going to do that in time-lapse. I'm just going to snap in my fingers and then you will see the first designs. I know, I said that I was going to do this in Tinkercad, but I also learned to use Fusion 360. Why not using that while doing it, you know? You learn more by doing it, right? It is very complicated. If you are looking to this here, it is looking very sketchy. It is actually the base plate where I'm going to mount the uh, X arm to the, to the Y axis. Like mentioned, I'm going to use the V-slot rollers. And so based upon this principle, I made it a little bit bigger so that it can house the 2040 aluminum extrusion. Oh my gosh, it's 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 very complicated, but I, in the end, it's just prototyping, test fitting, and thinking about it. And I, while I was doing that, I also found the, the old stepper motors that I took from the Ender 6. Those were still with brackets, so I tested it out, and it doesn't look that bad. I need to design my own brackets. For the backside of the X-axis, I'm going to use also a plate similar like this. So like mentioned, this is the Y axis with the two uh, stopper motors on it. The, these are bra on brackets from the Creality and the 6. Uh, I had them laying around, very perfect. It's not going to be the official spot where I'm going to attach the motors to. They are going to be closer to the, the, the base for the Z axis because it is called Z core. So everything is very close to the uh, Z axis. Quarks Y system, cantilever, 
everything compact but still having a very cool movement. So, but what I did in Fusion, I designed this little bracket. This is going to sit with some V-slot rollers onto the Y-axis and the X-axis is uh, going to be mounted right in here. Then we had this this little bracket. This is the for the end. It is going to be attached right on the top of here. And I already put some heated inserts with some screws. You will uh, screw this part together. You take the um, three times ten screws. You put them in there. And then the screwdriver. You don't see anything, right? Let, let's let's move it to there. Okay, shall we? So, and this is how the uh, x-axis will look like. The bracket for the y-axis on this side and on this side it's going to be the place where the belts are running over it. I hope that this is all going to look nice. And as you can see here on the back side we have here is a spacer and above there's also a spacer that when I'm going to put the pulleys in there that they will be right in the center of those two grooves from the profile so that it looks nice let's continue with this um, little side note so just like mentioned i need to print two more of these and uh, attach them to the sides of the motors i did discover that uh, i only have three bearing with flanges and it's it's not going to cover the whole project so what i do is uh, or what i actually did i went into fusion 360 i designed just a mock-up uh, piece in order to uh, to to get going until i got something better it's the first time that i'm going to do something on this scale not using tinkercad using fusion 360 using some parts that i had laying around from previous projects something like this can you already see it i don't have spaces at this moment so uh, and also the the screw is looking very weird. I think I need to screw from at least 55 in order to reach the other side But my longest screws are 40 so I'm not going to make it I need to order different kind of parts in order to keep this whole thing going uh, I think in the next video I will be using these instead of the you know flanged bearings uh, maybe also try to see some for something else that I can do in the meantime because this with these screws it is looking weird yeah, this is looking weird. Oh my gosh. I didn't expect this. Normally I'm an, a type of guy that follows instructions from a man, manual. No, not always. Not, I don't do that always. But just like the poor man's Prusa build. Some little, you know, follow, following the instructions. Making some little tweaks or changes along the way that I, you know, prepared. This, this is unprepared. Oh my gosh. Really? So I was thinking 55. The longest screw that I have are 25. If I'm going to use them, which is possible, I need to make sure that the heated inserts are exactly straight because if it is just a little bit off, it looks weird. I'm going to continue with here with this build and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. So, this is uh, the teeth from uh, <laughs> Terrific. Well, actually, this is just mock-up. It's not going to be like this for all the time. Of course, this is going to move over the Y-axis, you know, and it's running on V-rollers. I need to find a way to attach the, uh, the base, the Z-axis, right here. I also need to think about the, uh, the timing belts that are going to run very close to this side. So, I think the end result for you know, the first mock-up looks amazing. Still, I need to have some more flanged bearings or bearing with flanges. Timing belts, I have enough. It's it's just going to be a Core XY system, but then cantilever arm and, uh, you know, Z-Core, the cantilever Core XY 3D printer. Is it going to work? Or maybe not, but we will see. I know this is something very amazing, a cantilever arm Core XY system, the Z-Core, but I can imagine that, that you also want to watch something else. Check this video out. It's going to be amazing.